Get some RSO on you, man. Feel better, man. Please. You are live, sirs. Welcome to the late sesh. I'm Skillbone One, joined as always. Our little panelists together here. We got Spartan Grown, we got Sequence, and we have Backlicker Farms, aka Red Velvet, aka Red Setter Farm, aka Backlicker. King of the King of the Banana. AKA Singer of Incubus. Singer of Incubus. Nice it's to know you, you aka. Goodbye. <laughs> nice to know you. I don't even you. have YouTube pulled up. Good God. I gotta tuck my hair, man. God, I gotta tuck my hair. What's up? No, dude, it's perfect. You gotta bleach the tips. Side, yeah, man. Oh, can we do the mustache get too? All, all sides are, can can you get a, right? what do they call that? Is it an ombre? Can we get an ombre on the uh, mustache? Oh, you guys are great. Uh, oh. Chat, please check, check <laughs> live chat. I don't even know how to do this anymore, guys. I don't even have chat. The best up. chat experience. <laughs> Make sure that you tune in to the live chat. Jesus. Make sure that's selected. Red's getting abducted out of the gates. Damn. Top left corner, hit the chat. Hit live so chat. Wanna, You're gonna hang out with us live. <laughs> I wanna, uh, I wanna share a little, a little trick that I learned from Abolish Farms not, not too long ago. I don't know when I first started smoking with Abolish, whenever the hell that was. Whatever that Down was. to the bottom. When you get to the bottom of your fucking, your bud or your, uh, your roach or whatever you want to call it, you can stick it in your, uh, in your bowl. And take it right down to the very end and filter it through water too. At the, you know, usually all that resin, everything goes down to the end. So you get that extra water filter at the end. It's fucking awesome. There we go. So, yeah, shout out to you, Bosch, if you're watching. I saw you in chat earlier. I think I got chat figured out. I think I got live chat. Nope, I'm still in top chat. Look at that, guys. See, do as I say, not as I do. Every time. Every time. What are you guys smoking on? I have Rainbow Driver. Uh, oh. I'm jealous. Yeah. It's all nice and uh, dried up. Uh, probably has a couple more days ago for like actually probably being ready. Uh, let me see here. Rainbow Driver, Grape Glee, and Granddaddy Purple. Uh, finally at home, my possession. A uh, little bit. And let me see here, man. Uh, how about this? There you go. How far are you along in that uh, Rainbow Scobo? I have that same tray. I had a Jack's tray. Nice tray. Yeah, mine, send it to me. mine is Maybe going into flower uh, probably next week. I was just talking to Spartan before we went live, and I was holding up. I was telling him I can't wait to see him so that I can give him some of his headlights. And I was showing him. I was saying that it's been hanging for seven days now, but I really didn't want to fuck it up. I've come so far. It's turned out so well that I don't want to jar it prematurely and have it not be all it can be. So, uh, man, I'm high already. So let's go with the show. Just remember to be all you can be, Scobo. I already did that. I saw that in a lot of commercials when I was a kid. That's all I know. I, yeah, man, that was me. If for life, go <laughs> with the show. Sequence, I went to the channel to see if I can see those numbers, but the way that it's put in there, you can. It's like a weird, uh, crappy deal on here, man. Oh, I you wanted pull to. It up on your computer. Here, oh. I'll just do it right now. There we go. Let's see, that's why we got him here. It's, it's, yeah, it's real yeah, simple. Man. We got it. You can't make fun of me. Okay, well, if you're going to wait for me, you got to make me a co host so that I can share. I got to make him co host. Tuck the trick. Skillball is just getting a kick in the All you got to do is pull it up on your power. screen. And share screen like that. So this is what Skobo wanted to share We're with you over guys. Here, guys. Skobo, what did you want to uh, well, say about this stuff here? What I wanted to say is I wanted to start by thanking everybody that's listed on that. Uh, so what that says for anybody that doesn't want to squint, it says uh, join us on YouTube in 2021. It's only going to get better. Big shout outs to the team. Skobo One, Abolish Farms, Tara Wilson, Miss Cantaloupe. Dankman, Dan, Spartan Grown, Red Setter, Painted Lady, Yeti Stash, Sequence. Thank you. It says your community is growing. They've left 136,505 comments and shared your videos 906 times. Uh, we gained 1,873 subscribers and 174,345 new views. 
the biggest one that got me was this viewers spent 4.3 million minutes watching your videos in 2020. That's a fuck of a lot of yeah, mans. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah man. man. I just want to say thanks to everybody that is also part of these chats because you guys are what makes the show go. We're just fucking around on here. And uh, you I guys shout out chat, man. I mean, man, they've been blown. I can't even keep up with it. Uh, a lot of people have shouted me out. If I missed you, I'm sorry, but shout out to you. Uh, I see Zoso. I missed you. Uh, Abolished been flirting with me the whole time in chat. What he does. Uh, <laughs> been no bud. Shout out all you guys. Uh, Frank. I can't even. I'm not even gonna be. I'm too high. To I'm, gonna, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do it. Okay. Thing. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do it. We got. We got Shut 76. We got 76 people. I'm just rolling to the top here. Let me make sure I put it on live on my computer. Sequence got me for that. Frank's got right. a difficult last <laughs> name to say, man. So I want to say cheers to Dr. Potnist, UK Sif 420, Dro, Cannabus Driver, Spiky Pilot, Christian Zorica, Oki Grower, Lori's in the house, Hoss Farms, High High Farms. Should it be high, high, high farms? Uh, let's see, Hi. so uh, so high old gas. Now, see, that's an old school one. Most people don't know that one. That's a clever word to play there. Zosa, what's going on? Detroit River Rat, it's good seeing you again. Norwal is here, gone fishing. Yeah, man. Aaron Bud, Smash Cannabis, Abolished, Patrick O'Brien. There's a whole Mish Grows Grow show thing there. That's pretty fucking snazzy. Dave's not here. What's happening, brother? Painted Lady is here. I love having her on the panel for Sunday nights. Make sure you go check that out at 9 p.m. It's always good content. Frank, how you doing tonight? I would try to pronounce your last name, but I'm, <laughs> I'm going to try it, okay? I'm doing it. If I'm going to fuck it up, it's not being rude. I'm going to say it's, it's Sierra Mataro. Let me know if I got that right in the chat. If I didn't, mock me. Bindu Buds, what's going on? Hey, man. I think I've caught most people by now. Killer hey, Bees Garden, what's going on? Okay, okay. Hey, I don't know if you see at the bottom of the chat there. Ms. I'm still Cantaloupe. working my way down there, see, man. See, you see, Miss Cantaloupe says, I would join with a cringy looking face. Uh, you want to join? I say I say we let her in. Come on in. We got red velvet in here. Maybe we can Come on, Miss C. Miss C in here and really spice this thing up. Tell her she's part of the same chest. She knows those numbers. Jump up on here. She's just jealous because her man's hitting on me. That's all it is. She's trying to beat probably you back up. In, she's probably gonna come in here and just tell me off. <laughs> Get off my mans. I am going to smoke some black cherry soda. Shout out to Doc Dankenstein on that. How's it going, Kush Cloud? Secret partners. Okay. They get gonna shout out Mama Red. It's her birthday. Hey, birthday, Mama Red. Cheers, Chloe. I don't Clark. know if they're watching. I haven't seen Daddy Red pop on yet, but uh, they could be snoozing. Did you uh, did you want me to send the numbers to Miss C? Or did somebody do that? Because I'm not going to be able to do that in about 30 minutes. I can feel it creeping behind my eyes already. Yeah, man. Let me see how we get it to her. <laughs> yeah, good shout it. out to uh, Jay Wire. Cheers. See, I saw them today, and uh, I'm actually eating a. Uh, well, I'm not eating anything. I took a bite out of a brownie and I had some of these, uh, like, uh, trail, uh, what, what is the candy coated trail mix? Uh, not Chex Mix, Chex Mix with like the chocolate and, uh, well, like a muddy sugar. buddy kind of thing. Yeah. Peanut butter and stuff. Oh, mom is watching. So, uh, there you go. Cool. I don't know. There we but go. Yeah, I just uh, sent the numbers to you, Miss C. Check your phone. Oh, she stuff? said she would sub to Spartans yeah. OnlyFans. That's what she wanted. Okay. You got it. They're both on you now, bro. There you go. Oh, shit. I was not paying attention. I see it. They pulled out. They keep fans. talking about this. They must be fucking <laughs> taping me when I don't know, but I must be giving them a show somewhere. I don't know. Must be they hacking into the, the video speed at work. Yeah, that must a, be where it is. It's a bearded, bearded page right there. Damn it. I'm going to have Cheers, to. Cheers, Mr. Banks. I have to wear pants at work now. That's bullshit. Do the whole uh, naked gardener thing. Dude, if I could get away with that. Isn't that called the Brock? Oh, sequence is gone now. The joke's not going to work. He's not here. <laughs> if I could get away with that, I can see the allure. That would be amazing because it's so warm in those rooms. To be able to just walk in there would be so fucking nice. A nice bag for all there, Rev. Back Liquor Farm. Getting it started out the gates. Right out the gate. Showing that back liquor. Dude, I was watching that shit this morning on the replay, man. I was just cracking up. 
<laughs> Look at the bothers. He says we got a fun production during these rough times. <laughs> Get naked. Calendar style. Oh, shout out to. Let's see, was that Miss C that made that for us last year? Was it uh, calendar? The calendar thing, yeah, dude. The fucking pinup shit was hilarious. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that was great. That was a good one. Yeah, that was like the first. Uh, it was about a year ago now. Yeah, one of the first bloopers or spoofs. No, the original awesome fucking blooper. That's looking good. What you got? This is that um, pineapple tie leaner, the one I didn't keep. But it, uh, so it makes me want to keep the uh, keep looking through some of the 2020 years. Like these nugs are so nice, chunky. I mean, that's what I love to see is these nice, dense. big, chunky nugs. No dense. Just I don't want to see herms, man. I just don't want to see any herms. But I guess that tie, that tie leaner, the Highland tie or, or whatever. They say anything with tie, you have to watch for herms. That's kind of notorious for that. Kind of like. Um, right. Is it cherry pie? I think it's another one. Oh, the Brady Bunch, too. Abolish is bringing up the Brady Bunch one was fucking great. That was for the uh, anniversary show, wasn't it? That was probably back in July. That was yeah, probably that was, that was probably yeah. top top. It's got to be top four or five for me. It might be top one for me. That was so fucking good. <laughs> so funny. You should uh, play it. Good, but I don't actually have that. I don't have that saved. That's some production shit there. Could we Super screen share? Good too. Could, like could we movie. pull it up on YouTube and then screen share it? Uh, can can, you, can you remember it? which of the seventy episodes it was? <laughs> we, we could we could try to find it. No. 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 Not at all. Let's see here. Oh. Go back to that. What's everybody smoking in the chat tonight? I want to shout out to Tara. I forgot to shout her out a long time ago. And hi, hi, farms. I just found you today. I saw Tara shared your thing on her story, which I followed to your post, asking to try to get you were trying to get, I think it was over 100 followers at that time. So I jumped and threw it on my little bit. So not too bad. That's pretty good. Behind you, not in front of you. But I threw it up on my story to try to get you a couple of followers, and hopefully it got you there. Oki Growers asking, can we get some Donnie Burger in Oklahoma? I imagine so. Who's the breeder on it? Bloom Seed Co. I believe. Or is that Skunk? Is that Skunk Master? That might be, uh, yeah, that might be Skunk. Whoever did Hans Solberger, is that Skunk Master Flex? I believe it's Skunk Master Flex, the breeder on that. Ah, oh, man, it's too late in the day to ask me important questions, man. How many cookies have you had? Since I got home, I think it's three now. They're like, they're not like my Spartan cookies. They're a little bit weaker. They're, they're like 90 milligrams, I think. But it's RSO, so it's like stony high. It's not the. Is that now I lay me down to sleep shit? Yeah, it's like keeping my eyes half closed. But that Donnie Booger is. Fun. I'm still trying to get it, man. I've got. I got. Uh, Michigan Matt's gonna hook me up. I think so. Not. I think he said he would. So I just gotta wait for him to be able to get a plant big enough to take a cone off of. You say Michigan Matt. I say sour garlic cookie. <laughs> that's not my see that's the thing is i don't like the garlic and that's what i like about the hot or the hot solo that's what i like so much about donnie burger, donnie burger is it like it dials back the garlic it's still there in the background but it dials it way back and it pushes all that funk into the forefront right into your face and it's so like ah, so tasty i don't know and it doesn't take fucking forever to grow and it looks like those nugs kind of like what i just showed you like nice chunky nugs I don't know, man. I love the smoke of it. Like I said, I smoked one nug of it, and I can't stop talking about it. So no, that's, that, that's, uh, get that doesn't happen it. often. What's that? Has that been tested before to get a general roundabout? No, of, he hasn't uh, had it tested yet. No. I have to ask him if he's going to get it tested. I'm going to ask him what he's going to do with the flower. He's probably uh, 
He might get – he's doing a lot of his stuff in concentrates now. He might get it processed. Clone shippers have come a long way since the very early days. Remember, these would just be the one little light just click on. Yeah, that's a uh, shout out to Aaron the grower on those. Yeah, this is pretty sweet. So, yeah, this one I'll be able to put three clones. I mean, you could put as little as one in, uh, but you could put three in. I mean, but you could easily put probably three, four cuttings in each one of these slots if you really wanted to. Just think how many you could sl slam in here. And these lights on the inside are fucking bright as shit. I was so surprised. And I mean, oh, they're bright as a motherfucker. Holy shit. Better hope you have that shit taped up right or it's going to be shining through. Yeah. So, and I usually are um, somebody I know usually <laughs> when they send their clones, they don't put a light in it at all. So, I mean, there's three in here. So, I mean, I think this is pretty, uh, I mean, it's latched closed. It doesn't, I mean, you could there's supports on the inside that are going through the middle so it's pretty crush proof resistant i'll say i wouldn't say proof but pretty damn these are pretty nice if you got to send more than one i would say yeah that, i think it's just at atg acres.com i think is his website where you can get those and he's selling a shirt on there which is a nice shirt and I think there's another product. I just don't remember what it was. I don't know. Shout out to Kezu in the chat. Yeah, man. He, uh, he's he been putting down the art. Make sure you go check out Kezu Kush over on Instagram. What's up, Medical Mondays? Hopefully you guys went over and checked that out before our show. Yeah, what's up, Medical Mondays? I like hanging out over there before the show. They got a good show, too. You know, it's fucking totally different show. So it's easy to, you know, sit there and then come to this show because it's completely different. There's this information based and ours is just... But it's still about cannabis, right? And there's some overlap. But yeah, I really like it. It's really cool. Spartan, I don't know if you've seen it in the chat, but Andy Mann says he's got a pack of Donnie Burger and a Mac One Cross. They're up next run. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, man, I don't know. Those are two flavors that are so, so on the opposite side of the spectrum for me, though. It's like my Mac... One, at least for me, is uh, got like a berry to it, and then um, that I really, really enjoy. And then the uh, for the uh, Donnie Burger, like total like funk, like burnt rubber, uh, foul. It makes your lip you, like I literally was smacking my lips after toking it on a on a fucking joint. It's just like it's just like so savory. It's I don't know, man. It's I really enjoyed it, so here I can <laughs> keep bringing up that fucking thing, and I'm just gonna miss it and miss it and miss it. <laughs> Come on, you could grow your own in what seven months, you know, something like that. After you get it vegged for however long you got to veg it for, yeah. hopefully the veg just, is quicker on that. Than, just what I fucking need, right? You know, here I want. I've been saying over and over, I want to pop more and more seeds, and uh, I'm taking in cuts. So I don't know. I got that triangle shine from uh, Doc. Is it triangle shine? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he calls it T-Shine, but it's Triangle Shine, Triangle Kush. Finally got it right. Okay, so I got the Triangle Shine. Uh, well, I've got Jack's Velvet. See, now I'm down to two Fingos of the Velvet Punch already. Well, it's, it's kind of strange. Yeah, I've got two Fingos in there, the Velvet Punch. I have a third one still in veg, but I think it's not Velvet Punch. So it's a cross with a different male. So I'm not sure if he's going to still call it that or what he's going to call that one. But that one is tiny as fuck. I mean, it's so small, so short, so slow vegging. So, um, but still better internode spacing than like Mac, but it's still pretty tight. So I don't know. I'm really super <laughs> interested in what that's going to be like because it's it's just standing out. It's different, you know. Um, so that one's going to be in the next round. So I've pushed it back that one back. So we'll see. Um, but I was wanting because i've got more seeds right of, of the uh those tester seeds of jacks to get through more velvet punches too but i don't know i might if i find something really special on just these two phenols i think i'm going to just select one keep it right. and uh move on to the cuvee hunt behind that and then uh start popping seeds man and uh behind the cuvee i'm slated to do orange gasm behind orange orange gasm i'm slated to do something that Ru uh, brandon russ sent me Probably the uh, Lamarilla. 
Yeah, probably the line. So. The GG4 back across to the line. Is that the line of Rilla? Yeah, that one. Um, and but the other one that I really liked from that too was the like maybe if I see you or sequence or somebody else who might have or anyone who has that that I, that I might be able to get a clone off of. I'll like obviously I'll I'll pop something else like the MK Ultra is really the MK Ultra cross that he sent me looks also really really interesting to me. So I always um, I've smoked that probably a handful of times and I've always been impressed with the stone on it. Dude, yeah, we got a we got one right now at work. It's by Lemonati. I haven't came across anything from them yet, except we just got that. We got a couple like we got Iran Contra, I think, was by them, and a couple others that are by Man, this Lemonati yeah. group. That's right. Dude, what the fuck kind of chirps are those? I can't smell nothing right now, but like literally, we just can't open jars and smell. But like, I don't know. Um, I really want to check them out really bad. Do this. Their stuff's actually really, really nice. They did a good job. I'd really like to be able to I need to try some of their stuff, see how it actually burns and everything. Oh, Red, tell us what flavors you guys got that has been impressive or you've seen that sounds interesting on tap at New Standard right now. I didn't hear what you were at. I'm sorry. Either my internet was glitching or something was going on. It was I out. said, tell us what kind of flavors that are new that you guys have over at New Standard right now. Something interesting or something. Just, man. Oh, uh, man. Uh, as far as new goes, yeah, there's people in the chat. You know, they always look for something like different. 35 off the top of my head. There's so many. Um, well, we had what Spartan. We had your uh, strawberry guava. We had that on the shelf. I think, I think that just tested at 20 hours. I haven't sent. What did you say? I think the last run that we got back, or last test result we got back from that strawberry guava, which was our last run of it, we're not running it again. Um, oh, so that was the last of the heaven sent and the strawberry guava then. Yes. I don't know what we have on the shelf by yours then right now. That I don't know. I don't know. That might have been it. We have GMO, but I think that might be high life GMO. Yeah, it won't be ours because we haven't ran GMO in a while. We're uh, just now <laughs> getting that back through the rotation. Um, I'm trying to think. Of all that stuff. We had some gelato that's life. going out. We had some mints that went out. We had um, there's animal mints. Animal. We had some do we have a junior? Did you have junior mints go out? I don't think. No. We, never mind. No, that was a some no. cartridge. I think we had. I hate all the mint strains that I've grown. So, but yeah. The <laughs> what animal don't you mints, like about them? The fucking smell and the flavor. It reminds me of menthol cigarettes. I fucking hate mint. I love mint flavored foods, but I don't want it in the smoke. You think I get the mint off of it? I think I had. Uh, God, what was it? It wasn't triangle. Mint. It was. Yeah, maybe it was like Triangle Mint or something like that, but it was more cheese. It was way cheesy. Um, God, I don't think that's what it was though. I can't really think of what the hell it was. You got me. You got me on a tough question. I'm sitting here thinking of. I'm doing like photographic memory check right now while I'm stoned. I know. It's tough because I always lean to so many, or I always lean to so few. Cause there's so much of the table it's all gmo cross it's all like uh bottlenecks of itself just so much of the same thing you know what i mean uh for example oh you know what we do have dude recently new the sunday driver fruity and fruity pebbles og so fruity pebbles og is in sunday driver so i mean there's some redundancy maybe um and then there's like the like somebody. like the mince thing like there's We'd have like SFV for Triangle Kush, like a whole bunch of other things that are pretty much OG Kush, um, or like a bunch of stuff that's just OG Kush in the backing of it. Or there's um, not not to like say that there's not a lot of profiles, but there's just not a lot of profiles. You know, there's just a lot of hype with GMO in it. There's a lot of hype with OGs crosses, and pretty much all those OGs are like the same cut. You know typically changed because it ended up in different areas of the country and got regrew out over a few years um it's called different names rebred so a lot of it's like similar genetics similar profiles um yeah i mean they're a little bit different once you get to now whoever's growing it now but uh i was still the same 
So there's a few like outliers that still like throw out. Flow's always one of them, man, because it's just chocolate tie in Afghan. You know, it's throwback. Throwback crosses. And it, I mean, it grows that way too. It grows huge. It grows like a sativa. It grows gnarly, big ass nugs. It's stacked, spear shaped. Pine the, cones. the Cindy 99 Durban Poison, the Winnie that I got off of Eagle a long time ago from Beans. Dude, it, it was like 100% sativa. It, I took it down at like 68 days, but it probably could have gone at least another 10. But uh, I didn't want to tie up my whole room just for that. So when I pulled it down, it smells like extreme lemons and berries. <clears throat> it's such a nice, nice fucking smell to it, man. I can't wait until it actually you know, dries out enough and I get to put it in a jar for a little bit. I'm, uh, I want to I want to just chime in because I'm too lazy to chat or type in chat, but we're talking about uh, a couple guys in chat are talking back and forth about the difference between Mac and Mac one. And if, if there is a difference and there 100% is a difference, um, the easiest way that I can explain it would be with like humans and children. So if you have a mother and father and they have their kids, is every kid exactly the same? No, they're all different. Same thing happens with the plants. When you make a, a cross of two plants and you get a bunch of seeds, each seed is its own little phenol. And um, the MAC-1 is the phenol that uh, Capulator chose to to be the one, the F1 that he liked the best. And that's the one he Number continued one. to breed with. So when he bred with that, you know, and made MAC seeds, those are all of the siblings. Yeah, there's a chance you're gonna get the MAC-1 for sure. And there's a chance that you're not also. So when people say Mac one or they also call it caps cut, they just mean the breeding, the same clone, the clone, we'll say the clone only or whatever. GG four. Uh, yeah. just kind of like GG four. It's the breeder cut. We'll say. Um, so that's what the difference is. It could have similarities for sure. Just like siblings have similarities, but um, it's different things. Believe me, even the self um, sequence grew out that uh, S one Mac right along with the, uh, the cut of Mac S1 or not S1, the Mac one caps cut and they were different. So there is a difference for sure. I've seen it with my own eyes. And then I got to uh, the tell other... Dave it's oh, not here that my name Red Velvet is in tribute to him tonight. Oh, <laughs> he's a, he says he's expecting some financial restitution for it. Yes. Some That's remuneration. I, I make sure I shout him out because he's my inspiration. Cheers, Digital D. And then I just wanted to touch on somebody that asked uh, the the story behind GMO. The what's GMO stand for? It stands just for that GMO. It's uh, at the time Girl Scouts were being sued or having having issue. People were boycotting them because it was found out that they used ingredients that were from GMO ingredients, genetically modified. So the breeder thought it would be funny. <laughs> to call his strain Girl Scout cookies after the GMO that uh, the Girl Scout cookie people were having an issue with. It's not uh, garlic, mashed potatoes, and onions. I've heard that story. That's not why. <laughs> it's, that's, that's the GMO story. And I think I'm caught up to chat now. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I'm, I'm following it now as we go to. So to answer your question directly, Scobo, what we have new on the shelf from my most recent email that I got tonight, Blue Ooh, he's Mason. professional. There we go. Ooh, Blue, Blue Mason, Mason by Apothecary. Now, see, you say blue, you got my fucking ears perking up right there. And then, uh, but yeah, man, like I actually haven't worked product in probably three or four days. So who knows what's been gone off the shelf and what's on the shelf, but. Dude, there's some heat on there. Uh, what do we have? Sorbetto? We have Sorbetto on the shelf. It's like super purple. So that's like the one that I can say off the top of my head that is like uh, the purple that we have on the shelf. It's really the only one that stands out purple wise. The Sunday Driver by, man, I feel like it's High Life, is a lot more like <clears throat> visually stimulating, if you will. It's got like a lot of strange orange and red hairs. And there pretty one. Some, there's a little bit of purple in the flower and then uh i feel like we have a sunday driver maybe by apothecary also that looks similar but it, it does look a little bit different apothecary is 
uh, supposedly the organic choice, I guess, different than whatever the others I'm guessing are all hydro. Uh, I haven't really seen a good glimpse of any of the other operations. I'm not also sure if Apothecary is living soil or what type of organic they really are, but we label them certified organic. So I try whatever not that to, means. And I try not the, to be uh, one of those cannabis, you know. one of those guys that dogs people so much, but I'm also an honest person. So I'm just gonna leave it at I'm, I don't have a high opinion of High Life Farms. <laughs> so I've, I've I haven't been into their facility, but I've seen enough pictures. Yeah, neither have I. So. But uh, we do carry their their flower and Apotheca's flower, Mint Canico's flower. Uh, like I said, we just picked up Luminati, uh, Lemonade. I'm not sure if it's on the rec shelf, but I know it's on the med shelf. Uh, Are you saying Lemon? Are you saying Lemon? Like, yeah, lemonade? yeah. Lemonade. yeah. That's Lem fucking Lemonade that's awesome. instead of that's Illuminati. That's amazing. I love the name. Dude, it's a great name. It's a great name. I tried finding them on Instagram. What's I just, their logo look like? Do they have a sweet logo? I have no too? idea. I, uh, I'm not be, sure I hope it's the eye Instagram with the pyramid. They got a different... The eye and the they have a different name on their account for Instagram if they're even there, you know, uh, what they're but sometimes that is frustrating, and, you know, is when you try to use Instagram and you're like, I want to see so and so, man, I want to follow them, and you're not sure, just like Spartan Grown always says, all one word or it's sequence with a three underscore mi, you know, otherwise, you're like, I can't find this person. Okie okay, Grower says, I had a dispensary tell me GMO is stood for good morning, Oklahoma. Fucking butt, butt tenders will say anything, won't they? I don't even know what that would fucking mean if somebody said good morning, Oklahoma to me. I, would, I don't know even what that is. This, what does that even mean? <laughs> <laughs> it means shut up and buy it, punk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, okay, so we're talking about Sunday Driver, right? And and I want to say, like, I really like Rainbow Driver, but that doesn't mean shit compared to Sunday Driver. You know what I mean? I did. I have had it, though. I had a uh, uh, shout out to Deb Smith. I think I had Sunday Driver from him. So really good flower. But again, when we start talking about, you know, let's let's tie Chad into it. It You know, just because you have the same name as somebody else does for something, you know, we both buy the same pack of beans. It doesn't mean that, you know, in your 10 and my 10, that we're going to find something that's the same. We could find 20 different fucking things. And, you know, when you, you multiply that and you put it on a large scale, you realize that, you know, it's all kind of a crapshoot. It's just that sometimes you're lucky. Like, I, I, we keep mentioning Rasta Jeff and the uh, lemon. Uh, what the hell is the one that Dro grew and that Painted Lady has? I'm just drawing uh, a blank on him. The Lemon Jeffrey. Lemon, Lemon Jeffrey. Jeffrey. Yeah, that's what it is. That's the one that's named after Rasta Jeff. <laughs> right. Yep. But that one, um, I haven't had painted ladies, but I've had droves. And to me, it's the most impressive lemon strain I've tried. Now, I don't know how it is to grow. I don't know how it is to grow for my style. I don't know how it would do in my environment or for the goofy shit that I do. You know, and, and I could try to grow it and it just maybe I don't nail it just like Dro does. Sometimes it's that way. Sometimes you got to fucking mix it up a little bit. Now, at the same time, when I grow headlights, Spartan has told me that it's very, very, very similar to when he grows it. So that makes me feel good. At the same time, Abolished Jimmy C say that when I grow the Abolished OG, that I get different notes that comes through on it than what they do. Yet when I grow, I see how I'm doing this. Yet when I grow the citral glue that I got off a of sequence, I get really, really close to that. So even when, whenever I meet up with them and he happens to have any citral glue or Tara or Lori does or anybody else, I just, bam, as soon as I hit it, I already know what, I don't need to read it. I know exactly what it is. So, you know, even though there is a lot of genetic variants that we can get through a pack or, you know, a posse for that matter, it's fucking hard to say, man. And I hate to get tied down in the minutia of like, well, this was the this was the 47th cut and they were doing this back then when they lived here. And like, that's all cool and shit. And I, I dig cannabis history as much as anybody else. I did a big show with Jack Greenstock way back in the very, 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 very beginning when it was just cheap home grow. And we talked all about strains and stuff like that. And I want to give a shout out to Jack while I have his name in my Pretty Mine. soon. Well, hopefully pretty soon, at least next year sometime. We're hoping he'll uh, drop that book. First 
first of a couple. Yeah. And you'll be able to put a Jack Greenstock book on your shelf. That'd be cool. When he does, I want him back on the late session, man. For sure. Hell yeah. I, gotta, I just got to come up with an excuse to get him here. That's all. You know what I mean? He's always down. I just don't like bugging him all the time. Cheers, Infinity 420. 2042 Spacewalker. How you doing? Tonight? I'll bug him. I'll bug him and bug him on. Digital D. Cheers. Uh, that was headlights. That's cross between uh, Northern Lights and Headband. I'm going to hold it up. Shaky, shaky. Come on. Yesterday was funny when I was trying to get Spark to do it with the Dank Man Dan. He was like, it's going to touch the camera. There we go. So, bam. That's oh, just yeah, one of the top Yeah, that's ones. another one of those ones that's in just about oh, almost everything. Well, if you think about it, it's in GMO, and garlic, garlic cookies, something like that. Isn't it like GMO, like a uh, cookies offspring or something like that? Yeah. So there's a lot of that, and so it's a lot of that same terpene flavor profile, just high caryophylline, like hydrocrinoline or something like that, a couple of those. Not a lot of the outliers like pinene, limonene. It's heady, heady outliers. <clears throat> but then uh, stuff on, you know, you know, um, you never know how long something's sitting on shelf, you know, so you could have like a sativa, and who knows what the metric tag says, how long ago it's been sitting on the shelf. Uh, wherever you're at, I'm not saying this is a new standard specific. But this is um, <clears throat> so I mean it could hit you with CBNs. You can smoke it and be like, oh, I'm groggy, you know, whatever. It puts you out. And you have a bunch of CBN, a bunch of conversion going on just because it's older aged. Really don't know. You get like a pre roll, something like that. You know, pre rolls. I mean, fast sell. I mean, I buy them. I get them all the time. Great. I get I get blasted off by them. Some of them are really good, really good stuff. I had Moby Dick, dude. It was great, man. It had like a yeah. One almost two, maybe yeah, like almost two percent CBD in it or something on the tag, dude. Every other, every other metro tag, almost down the line, man. Point zero one, point zero two, less than, uh, you know, the less than the LOQ, which is like non quantitative enough, um, values. <clears throat> so there's like never any CBD. There's no balance. There's no real sativas. You know what I mean? They're all watered down hybrids of some sort you know it's like uh and i get it you know with flowering time this and that but there's some aspects to a few of these like strains that like satrique and some other ones that are pretty good uh remember when i ran the the scuba the one you have uh not the plant no not the plant that you have the uh the flowers that i gave you the uh um, ro rosaberry oh yeah 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 rosaberry now that to me is like sativa okay Balance amount of CBD, balance amount of THC, grew huge, had a nice long flower in time, grew these epic bottle sized colas with these crazy fox, you know, like natural foxtails, not stress foxtails. Uh, the, the flower just kind of, it almost opens up, you know, in, in sort of a way. And I've had that happen with the F13s. And the F13s were like real crazy floral and like had a little, little pine and like almost like a little fish gut smell to them you know and like real funky and i still have some of it and it's like you real still mind. have some hell yeah I still man. have yeah well yeah you know it's Daddy like Red's in the tough. house What's it's that, real Red? tough to like get your patients convinced on some stuff that looks like swag but it's like it's that's to me that that's sativa look at like a dr grinspoon or something like that I suppose that stuff will blow your mind but it's like you got to like pick calyxes off the whole plant in order to get a bowl you know or brax off the whole plant get before we before we move on, you, you mentioned Moby Dick, and I grew Moby Dick out last year, and I want to give a shout out to Kyle Gardner, First Class Gardens. Uh, I got the cut directly from him. I ran it, and it had the burnt rubber skunk smell to it. It was nice, man. So. I want to um, shout out it. chat for keeping me honest here. Uh, Cult 16, no, wait, Cult 616 in chat was asking for some clarification i may have said uh, in my ramblings or at least he got the or she got the impression that i had said that gmo and cookies were the same they're not girl scout cookies is one thing the uh it's its own strain gmo actually has girl scout cookies kind of in some of the lineage it's it's uh like it's a girl scout cookie cross to um well it's chem cookies but it's girl scout cookie cross to chem dog I believe, right? Chem dog. Yeah, chem dog times Girl Scout cookies. 
chem cookies. So it'd be, again, it'd be like a pheno of chem cookies. So if somebody's selling you GMO seeds, they're lying to you. Just like if they're selling you Mac one seeds or GG four seeds or whatever. Grand Daddy purple strain. seeds. OG Kush seeds. They're, they're just liars. Give a shout out to Nut Tree Farms for this Black Domina I'm about to smoke. Here's another good one. Okay, Black Domina. Okay, so I've grown this before. I've smoked it for a lot of years. Uh, I've had ones that taste like black pepper. I've had ones that are more burnt rubber skunky. This one is in between. So all Black Domina, not all the same. I don't have any more left, but shout out to Dr. Uh, Dankenstein, man, that uh, black cherry soda. Black cherry soda. That's what I smoked at the start of the show. Dude, it was so, so cheesy, funky. I would, if it wasn't so fucking good, I'd save a little tiny bit to try to get to abolish because I think he'd really enjoyed that one. But uh, it was so fucking good. I just smoked all through it yesterday. It was so fucking. I don't know. Is that that weird cheesy stuff? It's, it was unique. I don't usually have a lot of stuff like that. What's that, Scobo? This is some Black very Domino. Fuzzy. Yeah, very, very Black fuzzy, Domino. but yeah. Nice. Old school. Okay, so here's the interesting question. Aaron Buds in chat says, uh, do you use earth box for your sip container? And I'm wondering how to get thicker branches. So I'd have to know what you're doing to first to see if I can figure out how to get you thicker branches. But I don't like the earth boxes myself. The design's fine. It's just... I don't like the shape of them. They're, Can you explain what they are? Um, it's a sip container, uh, a planner. It's a plastic planner. And there's a grate with a riser that sits down inside of it so that when you fill your soil levels up inside, there's a space underneath your soil. And there's a feed tube. It's just PVC pipe that goes down to that space. And when you fill your soil all in, the soil will hold that PVC in place and you can water through the PVC to fill and be a sub irrigated um, planner. SIP, S-I-P, sub irrigated planner. But um, this, the earth box is a brand of, of sub irrigated planner that it's really deep. So it's a taller, taller box and I grow it in height restricted areas. So that's not good for me. So I found some at a local Home Depot. They're just called city pickers. Um, and it's shorter and it's more square shaped instead of the earth boxes are also like rectangle shape and it's, you can do it, but it's kind of difficult to get four of them to, to fit into a four by four, but these city pickers are perfect to fit in a four by four, super easy. So I just found ones that fit my space better. Um, as far as like just overall ways to get thicker stems um i would usually recommend things like uh oh first thing i'd view is like an amino acid because that's going to help bring uptake of a lot of calcium um, i would do silica um, so for amino um, acids are you saying like the raw powders maybe or something like that that they could check out yeah raw powders got uh, amino acids uh, that's a perfect one uh, brandon rust at uh, sd microbes has a product called micro or not micro plus but he's got amino plus um, there's lots of different products out there. Uh, vote with your dollars. As far as, uh, but I like that combination of amino acids. Um, if I'm having like, the only time I would like try to like add amino acids and stuff is like I'm having a plant that I know has support issues like GG4. She's going to get some extra amino acids, but I usually don't add amino acids. Um, it's a good idea too, for sure. Um, but I don't, I generally, I guess I do add it when I add recharge in, 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 a, in a small amount, but uh, I don't generally just target amino acids for that. But if you really want to get thicker stems, add amino That's acids. kind of what my question was, was, I mean, sometimes that stuff's like genetic. Like, I mean, it kind of depends on like what genetics you're running with because like. I, you're not going to get a thick GG4, guys. It's always uh, going to be kind of I absolutely yeah. saw bigger OG, stems like even with GG4 like, with fucking silica and amino acids, it's, man. Well, silica, yeah. Azes, you know. Like Oof. Afghans and Kushes, yeah, you know, gnarly like stems, man. knuckle stems, you know, like little hazes and yeah, like like a lot of like those type of stuff. They just like to me, they they almost resemble like uh, vining type of plants, you know. They that, just kind of blue gelato, down, fall over, 
regrow into the ground, vine out, grow up, tip down, fall over, regrow into the ground, you know, like they'll clone themselves that way. Um, they almost seem like that's what they naturally do because they, they have like the nodal spacing is like eight to 10 inches sometimes, you know, and like, yeah, the stems, yeah, like that's true. Won't even get a quarter of an inch thick, you know, if you're lucky. I feel like silica was a game changer for me. Yeah. I use that when I use salt still before I even went to organic stuff. <laughs> Dave says I drink pure haterade, whatever that means. Haterade, Jesse, baby. Jesse White has a good one. He says if you have no smoke and you had to go to a dispensary for flour, what current strain are you coming home with? Questions are open to anyone else. My answer is going to be sound like a cop out, but I'm not buying any flour. If I have to go to the dispensary and buy something, I'll just buy an edible and uh, wait it out until I can grow some flour that I can enjoy. And that's coming from somebody who grows shit out of fucking just, I, I smoke my flour from work, but uh, I'd rather just have edibles because my tolerance level is just like, I would, it would, I would go broke. Break on, the bank. Yeah. yeah. I don't think I could afford what I would need in flour to do it. Red, how much is an ounce? Uh, let me see, man. You could like, you could budget friendly uh, some stuff that we got grown from Beaverton Farms. So like basically new standards flagship stuff. Um, Flow being one of them, like Grey Pie, Rolos, or like, I think we have like Orange Cushman's, Sorbetto. No, not the Sorbetto, but the, uh, we have a Sherbert. And there's a couple others online. They may or may not be med. There's uh, um, 35 to 40 an eighth right now so oh man okay there we go no i got it so at say, zero to the grams like 40. There you go. yeah i go 40 you're looking at like 320 which isn't that bad uh if you're looking at like a 45 dollar a you're looking at 360 this is plus tax uh and then so we max out on like like if you want some strawberry guava like we had or let's say we got a uh, Pardon, what do you got coming down, man? What'd you just pull? The lotto? Let's say we got the lotto. Yeah, the lotto was the last time. Let's say, let's say we got the lotto on the shelf. That's probably going to be a $70 eighth. And if yeah. you want an ounce of the lotto, you're going to roll at a 560 eighth. Oh. But you know what? No, oh. to be honest, man, if you're getting a single strain like that, we do a 5% bulk discount after, I think, like a half ounce or something like that. So I think you can go... Uh, and you're gonna pull 28 off of that. So what did I say? 560, 560, so like 532. <clears throat> well, that's really was my real answer was uh, I'm not going to the dispensary. But in the question, it says you have to go to the dispensary because you know that I could get a fucking, fucking primo fucking <laughs> ounce for fucking far less than that. Um, Dispensary, yeah, dispensary but that's plus, that's the fucking plus, regulation, uh, right. man. It's plus ten percent excise fault. tax, plus six percent sales tax, plus the government regulating and making us have add all these extra steps and tests, and this all goes on to the fucking end. So I, I mean, I bet you at least half of the cost, at least half of the cost of weed, is just bullshit because it was regulated by the government. Cheers, Raptor and Foraging Gardener. What's going on? Ontario grown bugs. Cheers. Yeah, I said my answer to that was that I'm going to basically pull a toucan Sam. I'm going to follow my nose. I'm not going to worry about the numbers or the names or anything else. If I'm lucky enough to go to a place that I can still smell it before I buy it, which, dude, I don't know if I can buy fucking shit without smelling it, man. It just kind of breaks the age old it blows my mind people are buying shit online people are buying shit online they're not even seeing it and they're just buying it sight unseen yeah the the only thing that i bought online i'm gonna give a shout out to them just because it was a fucking hell of a deal uh this is from happy buds this is my cbg so those are minis but if i get that up close enough and it will come in clear it should say 16 percent on there for cbg so this is something that I don't use all the time, but I can use it. And what I'll do with it is it doesn't really have a good flavor. It's like, eh, you know what I mean? So I tend to mix it with my own homegrown shit. So I may take it and mix it with some of this headlights 
or some GG4 or something like that, just to kind of really, really help me out for the medicine for the day. Man, do a tincture with that. That'd be fucking cool, too. I thought about that, too. Cheers, Lexi. Jay Wire. Chris Jay, what's going on? We got 117 people chill with us. We are 10 minutes from hash time, if you're going to choose to partake with us. For anybody new that's watching, we tend to celebrate communally on the hour like that. So make sure you have something rolled up, pack your bowl, turn on the email, get down how you get down. If you're Spartan grown, grab another cookie. Wow, it's already that close to hash time. Holy cow. Cruise along, right? Cheers, Tommy. What's going on, brother? I still got the legit dank bandan hash. Come on, you can do it. I got to give me some. You can do it. Come on. Uh, mine's not gonna fucking focus. I'm not gonna try this fucking thing. It's as lazy as I am, and I'm I'm just gonna accept it, accept it for what it is, and just enjoy it. You can I got a gram of my buddy's uh, raspberry beret. Oh my gosh, man! A little bit of prince. Oh, nice. Oh, dude, it smells like it reminds me of trap cookies. It really reminds me of like uh, kind of like Canna kitten and uh, uh, am I no tell guys trap cookie. Uh, Oh, Ross dude, I still have that, that too. This was uh this was a BHO run. Uh they use they use that like non-butane solvent stuff. Uh I'm not sure. But uh yeah, did his outdoor with it. Raspberry beret by Swamp Boys, I think is what he grew. Uh sh- I guess a shout out my homie from Organica. I wanna say that probably uh Steed's uh maybe from him or something. I'm pretty sure my homie with Organica has got his uh greenfish farms seed company maybe going now or starting off <clears throat> he's another like micro or class a uh maybe med rec uh up here in michigan sorry about that he's doing some serious vertical stacking anyway the buddy that i got the raspberry beret from is, is the same buddy who hooked me up with uh the train um you know my uh my furnace and everything Probably do my air conditioner, uh, get my air conditioners fixed this summer out at the farm and all that good stuff. So my buddy brought over a little bit of that for me. And yeah, man, it's nice and gilded, has a beautiful sheen to it, smokes really well, has a beautiful like tangerine scent to it. Oh man, it's nice. I have t- and tangerine raspberry almost. Uh oh hell yeah. Got a little it's a little gooey, so you kind of like nice and keep it nice and cold i don't want to say gooey not gooey at all like it's just probably warm in my house you know it's 70 degrees in my house but otherwise it shatters right up it's nice good stuff oh god that smells good and then i bought that gorilla glue from five star even when this uh, concentrate's gone, Dan, think? I'm going to sit here and smell this empty jar until it never doesn't smell like this. It just smells so <laughs> fucking good every time you open it. Yeah, talk you know, about Dan. Uh, fun fact on that is, is okay. Let me talk about Dan for a minute. So, what we're holding up is the Primal Punch. This is Dan's F1, and this is from MG1 Seeds. Shout out to Medgar One. Dan made this how did he make this he started off by hashing it and then he put it in the freeze dryer and then he pressed it right yeah you almost got it dude it's like so fucking close sounds like got the right process there scuba i have no patience for that stupid shit (laughs) no patience uh, Balish is asking me if the headlights has changed at all now that I've ran it a few times. Uh, what I would say about it is it's not that it's any different. Um, it's a super easy keeper. It's really nice because even if I leave bottom branches on, as long as I thin it away from the main stock on there, I still get really nice buds all the way through. So really no seed buds on that plant. The but, only thing I'll say that's you- different... Have you, have you pulled any flavor with like uh, I know we talked about Ed and Gypsum to get some more sulfur in there. Have you pulled any more flavor and more terps on this latest harvest? I feel like it is right now. I feel like it's super, super loud in a way that usually I only get out of the jar after a minute. You know how like it smells good at like week four, week five, and then it kind of turns down. It's a funny strain. Some weeks it smells really, really strong, and then it'll like turn down in flavor while it's still growing in there. So 
I'm happy with it. But what I was going to say is it starts off with more of like the, I said it's like a GMO thing, but it's kind of like a burgery flavor. And then it turns more as it goes on. You know, it's it, called the meatloaf of the South. Yeah. Burger, like like hamburger? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And then it, it. and then the, the stuff that I still have left is from, let's say, May. Okay, so stuff from May is now seven months old, and it turns into more of like a beef stroganoffy kind of flavor. I really like it. With or without gravy? With baby, always. Don't forget the gravy. Uh, that's yeah. exciting. Medgar One will be on the GML show it? panel yeah, starting right. soon, I think. Yes. Yeah, starting this week. This week he should be uh, awesome. starting his uh, his wife got a job where she's working at night now, so it frees him up at night. He'll be able to participate more. I think he's going to be a panelist every week uh, starting Friday. You know, I'll give a shout out to him and to the old Grow to Brown Table. That's what got me into streaming myself. And back when it used to be Med Grower and for Crowley, Vader, and who else did we have back then? Uh, Subcool was on later. On Pedro was Sub-Cool. on there. Bro Mouse, come on. Bro Mouse. Bro Mouse. Um, his and her grow. His and her grows on GML. Well, I've seen fire. that. I've seen that. Yeah, man. And my no till. Uh, oh, no, hold on. Brown Guy 420. Brown guy, uh, yeah, he's Doggo, really yeah, guy, that's man. I remember BG. He put out new content this week. Make sure you go over to uh, Paul Rose's channel. He's been yeah. putting out semi regular content. He's working on an incredibly clear isolate, isolate, distillate, isolate, isolate. It's got to be isolate. isolate, isolate. Three minutes yeah, to hash time. It's it's wildly clear. I mean, almost water like. Yeah. Uh, tinge amber at a volume, I suppose, with like a tiny volume. You can't even tell if there's any. It's like. So clear. Uh, Nevada, dude. Uh, NV. Uh, oh, NV Closet. NV Closet. Pedro, about Pedro yeah, and man. Dizzy. Come on. What about yeah. Pedro and Dizzy? They got their. Yeah. They said Pedro. I did forget on. Dizzy. My apologies, Dizzy. They, they've You're been watching. putting some stuff on YouTube. Again. Uh, they, yes, they have been. They've been streaming uh, about 11 o'clock, I think. Well, you know, for them, they were uh, one of the first ones to migrate over to Twitch. Uh, I used to watch a lot of Stone Ninja. Shout out to Stone Ninja as well over on Twitch. What happened to Mouse? You know what? I don't know. I really don't know. They, there was a falling out between him and, and Rapid and then uh, kind of fell off the radar, but I don't know. He did a video. He did a random Instagram live that I ended up watching. It was like a half hour long. It was a comparison video between like chilled LED, Fluence, maybe Raptor Grow or something else that he was working, the whatever the Oregon place that he was working or Pacific Northwest place that he was working. And then uh, he was talking in his video where he had another gig. I don't know if it was like East Coast gig, like Florida, New York or some shit. I don't know. I I'm back talking from serious, crazy memory. But yeah, probably another red state or something. So I don't think it's growing or anything. Maybe maybe it was not a red state. Maybe I'm totally wrong. Maybe it's California. I have no idea. Um, but yeah, that was a video. I don't know when that was. Maybe springtime, spring summer, late spring, early summer type. Here's only facts. Tag Sports Money. Could have fucking been February. I don't know, man. Dude, this year has been the strangest year. Yeah, I look up and it's like three weeks away. I'm like, I cannot wait to make it past this fucking year. <laughs> it is 11:59. It is almost halftime, and I am looking for Le Bell. I don't know where my high ass put it last time, so we're gonna do a virtual bell. I'm gonna jump the gun and just fucking start right now. I feel like me with my keys every day. If I don't hang them, they don't. I don't know where the fuck they go. I keep something in my hand for more than three minutes, I'm going to lose it. Don't forget that you're holding it and go look on a fucking journey for it. It's going to be, it's going to get set somewhere. Yep. Ding. Hashtag. Hashtag. I'm going to be doing this uh, at that Van Damme probably. Shit. 
Do -do. What hat should I have? Hmm. I have a clean chillum. Do I want to dirty it? I have a dirty chillum. Well, I don't have a dirty chillum. I have a chillum that's been used like once or twice. I suppose it is dirty. So yeah, I have a dirty chillum. Yeah, grow tube came back, went away, came back, went away, came back, went away, came back, went away. Hit a beat to it, Scobo. Damn, this shit is amazing. Yeah, that looks great. Sure. That dance, Dan stuff. Are you, uh, you torching that, Scobo? I'm using the yeah, uh, uh, Luke little, uh, Seahorse Pro. Yeah. What is that little thing? Ceramic tip heats up. Hey, shout I out to Joshua. <laughs> I'm going to fuck up your name. Sorry, dude. Campos. But he says, I just got my worm casting and craft blend pack from Build the Soil today. Oh, all sir. caps. I, that deserves to be in all caps because that's the fucking that's some secret sauce right there. Talking about worm castings last night and then again before the show. Ooh, still got it in my lungs. Ooh, a little overzealous. Man, yeah. I can't imagine what you paid for fucking shipping on worm casting. That shit is so heavy, unless you only got like a pound or something. Dude, this is the PSA. Look into how easy it is to start a worm bin. Trust me. As long as you're not eating like canned food and fucking ramen all the time, you'll be able to use your food scraps to feed your worms. And even if you don't want to do that, you can feed them your cannabis leaves and they can exist on that. And if you don't want to do that and you don't have leaves yet, you can use paper or you can do the regular egg cart or cardboard, whatever. Junk mail. Yeah, they, they send you Junk free mail. fertilizer to your fucking house every fucking day. Just make sure there's no plastic in it and shred it or rip it up with your hands. Fucking worms leak that shit. Dude, shout out, uh, I got Dirty oh, Qwerty. Shout green out, jeans. Uh, yeah, green fuck, jeans. Yeah, man, man. Totally he's, still doing content, yep. he's, he's still doing content too. He's still doing Instagram. Yeah, still doing he might be doing YouTube content. Yeah, he's sure, doing YouTube also. I have kind of few uh, and far between, but he's doing them. Too much into the YouTube game. Let me think. Uh, so the whole reason that I run Jacks three two and then the one, the whole reason I use the Max Sulfate is because of a lot of his information. Because he and said then, that he learned here. Let me flex on this just to show you. Yeah, I was he learned from his dad part for a long time. Yeah, man. he learned from his dad. Is that where it was? Okay. Yeah, and then so I was using the two part forever, and then he threw out like I don't know. This, he, he's got an awesome like Jack's, not just a Jack's like recipe, but like it's like a Jack's uh, breakdown on how it resembles like is it I don't know yep. like, Sunday like, morning directed or something like that. I don't know. There's like a couple of other. Uh, fertilizer methods that mixture rates and things like that that have been used in ag or in cannabis over the years or and you know it is uh what is nice about Jax is naturally it is higher in has a higher potassium than it does phosphorus rather than being the other way around so it has a real high amount of potassium which is uh, kind of what we're shooting for for the most part We don't need extra uh, phosphorus. So I agree with you too. That's a big one too. Tom, uh, Tommy Tari Combs was asking, and shout out to Tommy. Um, he wanted a tip on harvesting castings. And if you have just a regular worm, worm bin where it's just like a tote or something like that, um, really the fastest way is just to pull off the fucking bedding. You know, if you get another tote the same size and just kind of use that to catch the shit. You know, take all the fucking food off the top of the one or let them eat it all mostly up. That's the best way. And then um, just pull that shit out, <laughs> you know, with your hands or with a shovel or however you want to do it. You put gloves on if it bothers you and um, put it over a screen, right? You can you can make a you can I get fancy it. with it and make a two by four frame, stretch a screen over it and then make a two by four frame for that to fit in with some wheels on it and then you can just shake it you know shake it back and forth shake it back and forth you know dump the worm castings in 
Then you have your sifted castings on the bottom. The stuff that you collect on the top is going to be hopefully your worms. Yeah, right. That you can throw right back into the bin, and all your bigger, all your bigger chunks that they, they can go right back in the bin too because they need to be decomposed. So that's kind of how you do that. Um, if you get tired of doing that, which that's where I'm at, I um, got lazy with it and I just uh, take scoops straight out of there without uh, sifting it because I'm in an organic situation. So if there's some non decomposed shit in there, whatever. But uh, what I'm going to pivot to is right now I'm looking into, they're called flow through designs where the bottom is like uh, like dowel rods spaced apart. Um, the wetness of the soil lets it stick apart, so or stick together, I mean. So as the worm castings build up in the container above, you have a space below with like a rake that has tines to fit the, the slots, basically, that you've put on the bottom. So it just like does this and, and pulls the worm castings down through. So you harvest the worm castings through the bottom. That way you can keep putting food stock in the top and harvest food or worm castings off the bottom. That's kind of the direction I'm heading is that kind of a system. I haven't done it yet, but uh, that's kind of where my mind's going and that's where I'm going to head towards. It seems like an easier system once it's all up and going. You don't have to, un, you know, you don't have to empty the thing anymore. It's just empty it from the bottom and get what you need and you don't have to. It seems like it'd be better on the worms too because they tend to stay in the top two to four inches. So if you're harvesting just the bottom, you shouldn't be even disturbing worms. Well, you could also, if you have more time, you can do what's called horizontal harvesting, which is when you feed the worms, you put the shit to one side only and you don't add anything else and the worms will migrate over there. Something else you can do if that didn't work enough is I seen, you know, I'm gonna give her a shout out the crazy worm lady. Y'all laughed last night when I mentioned her, but she took a styrofoam cup. She put a bunch of holes inside then she filled it full of food and then put something on top of it the uh like some crumpled up paper and shit so that it would stay in their coffee filters and then all the worms went to that and came up out of those castings so she just transplants that to the new bin as well and you're pretty much left or you can take yeah. like a banana you like know something bigger, that they really want like a bigger scale uh, of what you often often see of that is they use shallow containers so they might only be four to six inches deep but they fit inside each other so once that first container, you do a regular worm bin in it. And once that first container starts to get pretty fairly full, you start the worm bedding and everything and food on the top or on the bottom of a new clean container with holes drilled in the bottom. And then you just set that on top and the worms will migrate into that. And then uh, once that gets partially full, like maybe halfway or more, you put the next one on. That's then what I'm can, doing. I got the triple deck. Yeah, one. then you can pop then you can pop the, t the two off and the one on the bottom, they should be completely migrated out of there by then. Uh, you can harvest the castings that way too. You can do that with fairly cheap. Like if you want to be super cheap, you could get just some small, you know, Rubbermaid or whatever that's on sale as long as they fit inside each other. And, you know, as long as you have a way to put hole, even if you don't have a drill at home, I mean, if you have a way to get something hot, <laughs> you can put oh, holes through plastic with something hot. I mean, uh, shit. I, I want to say cheers to C Dub from NorCal and also to Gosh Dang Yeti. Cool cat, what's happening? Torch and a screwdriver. Torch and a screwdriver. There you go. Um, yeah, so there's all different kinds of ways to do it. Um, but I just think that the benefits of being able to harvest your own castings like that it's pretty cool and this summer when i go out we have an english garden in our backyard and i'm going to make sure that i use a lot of those castings out there top off like the rose bush and shit like that and get it popping we had blooms on the roses until I tell you, like I mean, the 20th of november man you'll be surprised man once you start using i, I honestly that's what i throw at everything first if i have an issue that's what i fucking do first i'm just gonna all right Worm castings, water that shit in. We'll see what happens. Exactly. Cheers, Jess and Bean. We got 114 people hanging out, chilling with us. I hope that you are able to unwind with us and smoke a few and talk worms, aliens, whatever. Red's time to shine is coming upon us soon. I hope that you guys are able to check out Instagram. If you did, I did a pretty fucking 
slick meme with red today. All I did is I just put a picture of Giorgio Sukalos and hit at Red Setter Farm on there. Put a countdown timer. That's all we got to do. <laughs> They're asking you right after you're done dying over there. <laughs> what, what you're smoking? What you're smoking out of? Uh, Integrity Farms on chat. Shout that out chill to them, baby. Hold that pretty much. Sure, I think I got this just a uh, local smoke shop. Probably. Uh, a lot of people call those one hitters too. Sometimes, yeah, man. I'm having a hard time uh, talking here. Oh, take your breath away, baby. <laughs> Give me a second. You know what? I'm looking forward. I'm just gonna sit back. I think I'm, I'm gonna, gonna join you me. for a chillin' because I've been holding on to a specific bag here that's been sitting all off to the side. It's not in the regular goodie bag. I hope you can read what that says. I can't. It's blurry. It says Kush. It says Mac One. Oh, Mac One. <laughs> it says yeah. Mac One. That's from Spartan Girl. Terrible eyes. Man. You you almost have more Mac One than me right now. I almost. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you see why I I'm going to take this in a chill? I'm not rolling joints. I still have a sample of my man. little box. Yeah, man. C Dub. While you guys enjoy that, I'm going to answer C Dub from Norcal. He, he wanted to know what do I feed my worms usually. So I take junk mail. All the bullshit they send me in the mail that I don't, that I would normally throw in the garbage, it's paper. I have a paper shredder that I bought on clearance and I just shred that uh, paper. And so they get the paper. Uh, I also collect my leaves. So I have a leaf blower that is, you can turn to a vacuum. So it shreds them and, and then uh, bags them for me. And then I can take those and uh, I just fill a 55 gallon drum. So I collect leaves. So they get leaves from outside for my trees. And then uh, they also, which gives me my local biology that adds to the worm castings, which is awesome. We talk about leaf mold in leaf mold yeah i, I let it sit in a 55 gallon drum and i added the, my blocks of uh blue oyster mushroom mycelium in there so the blue oyster my, mushroom mycelium will be uh, uh breaking all that shit down uh pre-breaking it down and then i'll be adding that That'd to my spring. worm castings and hopefully get a little fungal dominated worm casting but uh mostly it's uh paper from that gets just sent to me junk mail and uh, leaves and then also uh how i so that stuff both of those add to me they subtract moisture in my head that's just what i think they're going to absorb things because they're like paper like and then so to add moisture like if i want to add moisture back then i can do food scraps you know like vegetables things like that that's lots of that's like tons of moisture or if i want to add just slight moisture that's when I go and get like uh, if I'm defoliating and taking some green leaves off a plant, maybe a couple handfuls of leaves or something like that. That's like a, just a slight moisture. So I can kind of play with the moisture of my worm bin by de depending on what I'm adding in. I don't often like put water, like spray water. And I see plenty of videos of people watering their worm bin and it makes me cringe. I don't. Yeah, I don't want to. That's at too all. goddamn wet. Unless I mean, if it's that fucking dry, why are you putting worms in it? But uh, well, it, well, remember that worms breathe through their skin, right? You know what I mean? You don't want it to be drying out and shit. Yeah. And another, so, you know, Joshua Campos was like, had a question, how do I store my castings? I mean, they're best used fresh, but uh, if you're going to store them, uh, they usually put them in like a breathable bag, like a mesh, uh, like a burlap or uh, they make those set those grain sacks. Uh, for uh you know the farms for the the grain it's uh i don't know it's not it's like a plasticky material i don't know what the name of it is nylon or something but it's like a mesh like you know like a basket so it's still kind of breathable that might get you a few extra amount of time for keeping the biology but if you're going to store it for any length of time you're kind of defeating the purpose there's still going to be a benefit to the soil but you're going to lose a lot of the biology but if you if you're going to do it for a length of time I would probably just stick it in the fucking bucket with a screw top lid. That's probably how I'd do it. I was planning on doing because I didn't want it to dry out. <laughs> right. Yeah. You can preserve some of that moisture. See, the last chilling was so plugged, I fucking have to soak her down. So I got to jump into my sidecar here. I mean, like, if I'm harvesting castings, I'm usually throwing them in. I'm using them. I'm, like I'm using them that day. Throwing them in a transplant hole, top dressing some plants. One of those two options. Oh, let's see. Let's say cheers to Florinogs. 
we have any other questions rolling through chat right now? It's like Coffee there. grounds, melon, pumpkin. Yeah, I agree with all three of those. Uh, coffee right. grounds are going to give you some nitrogen. Oh, Tommy, you used a period when you said I grabbed a few bags for the worm bin. You put worm period bin, and that so thought it was you're doing a link. So Streamlabs timed you up. That's going away in a month, so don't worry. That Streamlabs thing where it times people out, that's going away soon. So don't worry about that shit. Just deal with it for a couple more weeks. Sorry, guys. Yeah, coffee grounds, you know, you got to you got to remember too the things that you add is going to have some kind of MPK to the final product, right? So if you're always adding the same thing, like when I'm adding paper, that's really not going to add much MPK, but it's going to add a lot of carbon. Um, but when I start adding green things, I like my green leaves, when I add those, I'm adding nitrogen. When you Gosh, add <laughs> when you add uh, coffee grounds, especially that's high. I unmuted so you could hear him. <laughs> So like if you're getting like a source of used uh, or coffee grounds, right? If you're using just that, you might want to consider mixing something else with it because it's going to be super high nitrogen. That might be something you're looking for. Who knows? Uh, but uh, just know like if you have a high nitrogen worm casting, that's not something you want to amend in flour, we'll say, when you're not looking for nitrogen. Three months okay to store castings. That's what I was going to say earlier. I watched something and they said basically 90 days that, you know, so, I mean, it's not like it goes bad after that, but. So, so worm castings have a lot of benefits, a ton of benefits. Those benefits decrease as the ages. Now, when you ask me, you know, is three months okay? Well, I mean, I don't even know what your worm castings are. I don't know what the biology is in your worm castings, really, which you would need to have even i mean if i give you an answer i'm just fucking giving you an answer and i have no fucking clue so i'm not you know willing to do that i'm not comfortable doing that but well you would need to be like a microscope and look at it to, to see how much biology was living but even in the worst case scenario say all the biology died there's still the mpk that that biology unlocked in those worm castings there's still a lot of good uh, soil building properties of that worm castings so there's still um benefits of it so I'm not going to say it's bad per se or it expired per se, but uh, some of the benefits you're going to lose out on. And it's mostly on the biology side of things, the living part. Yes. Uh, the predators, you know, you get lots of predators and nematodes if they're really good castings and just so many, uh, you know, the formerly hypostasis miles. Now the stratiolopis simitis. It's gotten really good um, at that, you know, that through all these shows, you've got the like rolling with it. To give you credit. <laughs> I'm saying I'm terribly wrong, but it's in the it's in the neighborhood. <laughs> no, but it comes off so smooth. I'm not doubting you. <laughs> yeah, uh, Mama Los Seven One Zero. Any help on setting up a sip bed like a four by eight? So uh, I've never done that. So I mean, I could I could tell you ideas of what I would have to do that, but the general idea is I would just take the same container that I'm growing in now and make it that size. So I would get some kind of a riser system uh, to try to emulate that to be able to hold the uh, soil system above the water system in some way. And I would probably use multiple, um, what do you call those, uh, PVC pipes and at a bigger diameter than what I use now. Like I would use like a, at least one inch, probably eh, at least one inch PVC um, for the feed tube and I'd have several of them, not so much for feeding, but just to get the airflow down there. So, so they'd have multiple areas where the air, you can have air exchange. Um, so you, so you don't run into anaerobic conditions underneath there. Uh, but other than that, just build out your bed. You could, I mean, I would try There's to like avoid a flood tray underneath it. Yeah. I would try to avoid wood just because you could, uh, uh unless it's treated, if you have to use wood, use treated. That's why you can avoid fungus and molds and things like that, and then line it with whatever you can. But pond uh, liner, yeah, pond liner could work. I mean, you could do tables. I mean, it depends on how much space you have. You could do tables with, uh, like you said, that with a tray, and and uh, you could do a soma sip system on a bed. So then you could just do, you could get a four by eight uh, tray. You could fill it with hydrogen pellets. You could go and order a uh, living soil bed. Uh, from grassroots. grassroots fabric pots that's what i have set that on top of that uh, all those clay pebbles 
and uh, do it like a soma style sip system fill your living soil in there and uh, water those uh, pebbles keep those pebbles full of water and uh, it should wake up into the bed um, um, that's another option you could do it'd be a little easier to set that one up probably right should be close uh cheers to paul japan and he has a question for you spartan he says just about to receive my extract craft source can you give me any helpful do's or don'ts as you always seem like an amazing wealth of information i've managed to get some pure ethanol absolute from my local pharmacy and have a buckner funnel and a chest freezer thanks which uh which unit do you have though did you you said you got the extract crafts. Is it the turbo the source craft turbo, or did you get the Ito? I'm going to assume the turbo. It says source. It said source yeah. So that's probably yeah. the turbo. Um, any tips? Well, it sounds like you've already listened to a lot of my tips just by the, the tools that you have, but, uh, and I'll you jumped out and bought one quick. of them because they're super expensive. <laughs> so yeah. You've, yeah. You've done some research. So, um, yeah, keeping the, Okay, so I'll just run through my process in, in quick steps um, and not really get try to get in too much detail. Um, so I take my product, usually trim, it's rarely buds, but usually just trim, and I decarb it in the oven. My decarb is, I use a convection oven, if that makes a difference to you, uh, 230 degrees for an hour. After that, I take that product out and let it, uh, it put, you know, let it cool down to room temperature put it in a Ziploc freezer bag and throw that in the freezer. The alcohol is already in the freezer. I usually do that overnight. That way I know that both are frozen. Then I can work inside that freezer. So you said you had a freezer, so you could do the same thing. Um, you could even set up your Buckner funnel in that freezer. You could put the filter paper in the, uh, in the funnel and get everything set up, you know, have it right there in the freezer. Open that sucker up and just keep it running as you, as you work. Um, what else? What did I say? Oh, I put the, so I put the, then I take the, uh, that open up my freezer bag that has the uh, plant material in it. I take my alcohol and I pour it into that, uh, container into that bag until the alcohol completely covers the, uh, plant material. Now it, you don't have to fill It'll look like you have to put a lot more in than what you really do. You can stop with about this much to you to the top of the plant material. And then as you close the bag and, and, and get rid of some of that air, you'll see the alcohol creep up the bag. So you can use a little less alcohol there with that little tip. Anyways, what the point is, is you want to be able to, once you set this thing down in the freezer, that it's going to be soaking. There's not going to be plant material exposed. It's all going to be within the, in the alcohol. You can do quick soaks. You can do long soaks. I'll let you play with that. The shorter the soak, technically speaking, or, or usually the shorter the soak, the higher the quality of the extract is at the end. If you're looking to do dabs and stuff like that, post-process. Um, for our FSO, I, I'm I doing a longer the soak. least full spectrum it would be, though. Yeah, I agree with you. Yep, exactly. You're going to have less of a spectrum. You're going to have more of a targeted spectrum. What you get, though, it's like that first pull on the bubble hash, man. Yeah, you, can, you yeah. can do more runs on it, but oof. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's the, yeah, you can experiment and do extra runs, do your second run. I've done double washes before. I, I've got terrible, I mean, this I got returns still, but not very good returns. So, I haven't seen it worthwhile to do a second run, but no, I've you know, never you're doing a short either. soak. If you're doing a short soak, it's fucking 100% worth it. But I'm doing like almost 24 hour soaks sometimes. Uh, I like a long soak in there. Once uh, it's done being soaked, and you're ready to filter that out. You just pour that in your Buckner funnel and run your your pump if you got a hand pump or if you got an electrical pump or however you got that set up. I don't have one of those. Uh, me either. <laughs> I used to use the source. Uh, you can use the source that you're buying. Actually, take the crucible off, and you'll see a little vacuum port. Start the machine up and use your tubing from your Buckner funnel and just cover that vacuum port. It'll make a seal and it'll work as a uh, Buckner funnel for you. Just use that fucking thing. That's what I used to do. There's, so there's another, another tip for you. It just came to me. <laughs> so, fil so filter that shit as quickly. Yeah, I can you use know. that on my Buckner funnel. Yep. Yeah. I have a Buckner funnel. Yeah, but you, and have, you have the source. Yeah, but he's, he has I don't he's know the pump. I have a hand pump. Oh, use that hand pump. That'll work. Yeah, but if much I is, how much is a vacuum? How much is a vacuum pump? 
I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how much would be required. It'd be a very little. I mean, the hand pump is sufficient. I don't think you bucks, really. 200 bucks, probably something. Range if you can get it with the hand pump for free, get it. Yeah, it was like twenty. Yeah. It was like a twenty dollar hand pump, fifteen dollar hand pump, or something. Anyway, the point for, is to be able to filter faster, whatever, right? So, alcohol. so that you're trying to avoid heating up the product to avoid chlorophyll leaching, really. So, hand pump that bitch, filter everything out in the freezer. Once that's all filtered out, you got a tincture now. At this point, you take that tincture, you put it into your machine. It's gonna boil it off. Put something really stupid that it gives you a dish. Uh, I leave the whole that 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 metal dish that it comes with. I leave that in the, I used to leave it right in the freezer and I used, uh, when you buy predators, they always come with these freezer packs. I use those same fucking, I just saved them, use those same freezer packs. And I just throw a bunch of those in that dish, leave them in the freezer. <clears throat> so, and then you, I cycle them out too. You know, if I go in there, I feel like they're squishy and they're not so cold. I'll just cycle them out with it. I've got, I can, I've got <laughs> so many of those stupid packs. Like, you know, they're endless. They keep coming. Right. They so, uh, um, so the, that, the ticket on that smaller device is to keep that top lid cold because what it's doing is evaporating alcohol off, right? And then that alcohol, as soon as it hits that cold glass, it condenses again and then falls back to the outside edge and is collected. So keep that cold on the top and it's going to be collecting way faster for you. And that's really my only other tips. I can't think of anything else. Um, I like these little, those, yeah, there's a uh, skill always giving you a good example though. I use the dental syringe, the five gram dental syringes. They have like a blunt plastic tip on it. So it's like, like no pointy objects or anything like that. Really easy to use. Even when that shit is hot, like I, I was boiling off to the very last bit of it. I let it sit off the thing. It, it might still be like a hundred degrees or so with the gun. I use it. I can pull it up into those syringes and it uh, doesn't like melt a syringe or anything. So they're, they're pretty uh, nice and hefty. I like them. There we go. And there you go. See, it makes it so easy to dose. I love it. Exactly. Syringes make it nice. I found a, uh, somebody tagged you today, Spartan, about finding the coffee warmer, which was funny because I found a fucking coffee warmer this week too. Just a little stupid switch on off thing. Because the thing that I really, really enjoy about Spartan's FSO is the consistency of it. I hate it when you have to really bear down on the plunger to try to get your dosage out. You know what I mean? It could be kind of a problem. I would rather just kind of ease up out of there. Easier. So, cheers. Yeah. And I think that helps too, the being the full spectrum. Uh, I think there's some more like um, plant oils in there that might be lost if it, if it was just like heated process, not under a, a vacuum. You know, like a, like a terpene or an ester or who knows, you know, what it is. But I really do believe that those help because I can sit there and try to, um, like I have the, I could run that Ito machine where it stays at a consistent temperature where it'll boil off all the alcohol supposedly except for like the last tiny percent. I can run it for like a day straight and it still has that consistency. You know what I mean? And That's I would great. still need to try to um, boil off, you know, put serious heat on it to, to get it to be thicker. Whatever it is, I really, really like it. And I know that he's going to really like his unit too. Just the ability. Yeah, I've actually got some uh, old Lexan. I got some old Lexan containers that I, <laughs> I From used From the industry? To. Yeah. Yeah, well, when I was in the industry and I had, I, you know, I had – pretty much direct to access to like some of the ship. I don't know. We use like Ed Don and a few of those other places. Dude, I have That's those giant Lexons. I mean, then, I use yeah, the so fucking I'd, oh, I'd get like little half and I'd get them to like store my personal weed in, you know, when I first started growing, I had just like a little bedroom or a little closet or whatever. And so I would just get those Lexons cause they had a nice sealed lid and they were food safe, good for the industry. So I was like, these are perfect. So I got about like, I have like a half dozen or something. You You're know, NSF, you know what I mean? Yeah, National Science yeah exactly. So like that, I'm just going to like stack them, you know, put my trim in there and then fill those up with alcohol. And then uh, and that's soap in there. that's what I use is I, I have a five gallon, uh, the clear plastic one. It's not like a five gallon bucket. It's the five gallon like you would store soup in it or something. It right, right. snaps on yep. the shit. So once yep. I build that up, then I either turn it into... Now that I have the washing machine, I might fuck with that again. But 
Uh, probably I'm just going to make some more tincture because I need to make more roller balls. I'll be giving my last one away tomorrow. I give a shout out to Keizu. He hooked up a really cool piece of fan art. Uh, go check out his page. I really dug that. Yeah, it was a really cool piece. That was one. sweet. I want to shout out Paul, Paul Japan. And he says, this funny name to have, Paul Japan. But he says, uh, shout out Australia. to Aussie. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Provision Cheers, I guess they're pretty close to, in the oh, same vicinity. Uh, we have more than a few Australian viewers. One of the cool things is when this was just a podcast, we used to use, uh, oh shit, I don't even remember what we used for the podcast format for that sequence of Kill Me Over That. Discord, anyway, no, 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 the podcast itself. No. Um, oh. Anyway, it showed the demographics of where listeners were from. So we had listeners from the US and Canada and Mexico, and we had listeners in Germany and France, and England, and we had Ireland. We had somebody that listened to us in Hong Kong. We had another person from Malaysia. We had some people from South Africa. You know, it's like when you, for me, what was really cool about it was here we were just two dudes from Michigan that really wanted to talk about cannabis and really focus on the positive sides of things to see that it has such a far reach to it. You know, and earlier when we started the show, uh, I wanted Sequence to bring those numbers up because it's not for a bragging thing. It's I focus instead on the community building. And I look in the chat and I see that we have people that have been with us since day one. And I do literally mean that from the very, very beginning, um, both Tara and Dan. I know Dan has gone to bed. He's got to go to work in the morning. Tara may still be here. And if not, Lori is. And then we have people that this may be the first time that they check us out. And they don't know the beauty of Back Liquor Farm, a.k.a. Red Velvet. What the fuck happened? Did you skip? <laughs> <laughs> There's a nice Red Velvet voice coming in, too. You know, it's real soft. It's oh, I'm excited! Weird. I bought a new, I bought a new microphone. I, I don't even see rock that. Red shit. I don't even see the any comment that says that. Uh, Baldi's Bud says, "Did I miss out on Red's backlicking skills?" And I was yeah. already in my motion when he started that, and then it came up, did and my, I was like, "Oh, this is my perfect. camera fall off or something?" Because Skibble was just having having his awesome soliloquy moment. Yeah, and then uh, I don't see anything about the backlicking farms in the chat, unless I'm missing it. Are you in live chat or are you in top chat? Damn it. I'm in live chat, actually. <laughs> live. I'm in live chat. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Elon again. Cheers, guys. We still got 112 people cool. chilling with us. I want to shout out Ian. He's got this pretty fucking cool. Ian? Like, yeah, Ian. He says, I'm working on putting in a flood tray under a soil bed with blue moths, which is interesting. And eventually. I, I tried it. I had that for a second. He says, and he's eventually he's going to add his fish tank into the mix, smarter and harder. That sounds amazing, but uh, are you going to use the blue mot like almost trying to be like a float valve, or what? Why wouldn't you put the blue valve, the blue mots in the top? And how are you going to flood with blue mots? I don't understand. Or he's just using the flood tray as a catch, and he's not really flooding with it. Uh, if you're using a four by eight bed and you're worried about it getting on the floor and shit. Or maybe he's doing a dual root zone. I don't know. Because he's talking about some aquaponics, it sounded like. So maybe that's what he's going to do is uh, maybe do some fish It water sounds is... like he's running fish water aquarium into through the carrots. Mess. Through the carrots. Yeah, into the carrots. I'm sorry, but we fucking drip drip drain. Drain. And then is it drained to waste? Because it's, uh, do you say he was using flood drain tables? But it would take yeah. so much water, dude. I mean, like, I yeah, have that's, that's, some that's fucking water. Too. I was it's, thinking it's, three, it's 300 gallons of soil in a four by eight. I know I have that. My sides are bulging now because I've well, you could water. have a, you could have an automatic water top off. Oh, yeah, he says right he's now. he's going to the top and he's going to be flooding the tray. So, yeah, it does sound like a dual root zone. So he's going to be flooding the bottom root zone, probably in hydrogen or something. Uh, with his aquaponic water and then uh, his blue moths are just kind oh, of okay. his living soil bed hydrated. But I was laughing because Painted Lady said back liquor farms coming in 2021. <laughs> Man, you could just fucking, you could just have a business and fucking merch. Gotta rewind. I did a back roll in the beginning. 
I saw it. I saw it. I it I commented on it. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> you could fucking you could fucking have a, a business on fucking merch alone, back liquor. You could have back liquor hats, yep. back liquor shirts. <laughs> back liquor is gonna sell. Back <laughs> liquor. <laughs> They'll say back liquor. Logo. And you could turn the hat backwards, right? So it says back liquor. Back. <laughs> back well, is it gonna hat. be a guy rolling a joint or is it gonna be somebody licking somebody's spine? On the back of the or underneath the bill, you could have like a tongue right here. It's like a tongue or some shit, dude. Fucking, you just pull the fucking string in the. Of course, you have to have it backwards at. <laughs> That's called self billing, folks. Now we're smoking some headlights. Cheers. So Raptor in chat, uh, shout out Raptor because I got uh, that he he um, re- recommended, requested, recommended, yeah, recommended the Myriad Mycology site for me to check out, and I ended up getting the Performance Blend. Am I not talking? I'm talking away from my microphone. I'm sorry, guys. <clears throat> I got the Performance Blend and I got the Agaricon, and I've been taking the Agaricon more or less at night, <clears throat> just because I've been taking the Performance more or less during the day. Just in case any like the cordyceps or the reishi or anything kind of keep me up too late, I smoke too much cannabis. I don't want any of that to happen. But I smoke too much like Rainbow Driver and shit. It's gonna like keep me up, so I don't want that to happen. So like, uh, let me think. Um, the antiviral effects from the agaricon. So I'm hoping that the I think it's like 15% polysaccharides. I'm not sure which one starts with a G, glucol or something like that. But uh. It's all supposed to be very antiviral, <clears throat> and then which is probably good right now, considering I just came off a of virus. And then uh, let me think here. And then the lion's mane, reishi, and cordyceps blend is for just focus. Uh, I think it's a lot of like cell uh, regrowth, and a lot of it like prevents cell necrosis, like all over. A lot, I think the lion's mane specifically will prevent cell ne- necrosis in the brain and then the reishi is like going to support i think blood flow maybe throughout the body and things like that and same with uh the cordyceps uh so those are going to I, I don't know i'm not a scientist or anything i don't know a ton about it but i'm pretty sure that uh they're just overall gonna help me digest food better i don't know man better for your so health you things like you that. bought a big bag of vitamin these, right a big bag of double powder. of them yeah, okay. I ended up getting pound bags of powder just because it was more cost effective. I'm gonna use it every day. I tried filling them capsules, but <clears throat> the recommended dosage is like a teaspoon. I weighed out a teaspoon of like the powder. I didn't pack it down either, so just a normal teaspoon of the powder ended up being uh, like two and a half grams on a scale. So to like put two and a half grams, and I actually got capsules. I put it into the like capsules. Six. It was. Well, it ended up being like four capsules, even tamped down. So it was uh, quite a bit of capsules. If I'm going to do those like twice a day plus the agaricons, I don't, I, I don't know. It's just going to maybe if I have a faster way of filling them. Scobo, you have that awesome like little tray. Uh, so I might have to just get a different type of a capsule filler. But then I still want to make sure that they're all weighed out right. You know what I mean? So I have to, yep, good scale. if I just do the math and I just make sure that it's all evenly spread, it'll be good enough. But, like, should I only do four at a time? You know what I mean? So, like, four at a time at, like, two and a half grams to kind of be accurate with it <clears throat> as far as dosage goes. But I don't know. Yeah, I just ordered the uh, Vitality blend, <clears throat> which was a 10, like, the 10 mushroom blend, which was just, it's really a small, it's only 200 milligram dose of each mushroom. So, a pretty small dose. But uh, it is, it does come out exactly what you said, to, to four capsules a day. Uh, so, two two capsules twice a day or no it's four capsules twice a day is what the Holy recommended dose. yeah that's what that was. it was four capsules so twice a lot, day yeah. yeah so what i've been I think doing it was just the one bag and i had the other bag of the agaricon which i was going to do i'm only doing the agaricon once a day though i'm not going to do like what's well, the agaricon's in the agaricon's in my vitality blend already yeah that's pretty that's good yeah that's it good antiviral that's why I kind of went with that one. That was the one I was really looking for. I was going to get the straight Agaricon, and I was like, fuck it. I'm just going to get this one. <laughs> it's got all the good ones. Lion's Mane, all, Cordyceps, Rishi, uh, Turkey Tail, all the good ones. Um, but anyhow, what I've been doing is I'm like, 
you know, I don't want to just put a ton of uh, fungus in my gut all at once. So I'm, I'm doing half the dose of the recommended dose. So I'm going to do four capsules a day. And I, I have been doing four capsules a day, but I've been taking two in the morning and then I take one at lunch and then one when I have dinner. And uh, it's been nice. I haven't had any issue. I might uh, start, you know, like taking two, two every time or something like that until I can work my way up to the uh, eight in a day. But yeah, those machines, I got uh, one that does 50 at a time. Yeah, yeah, yours was like, on your I wasn't worried about the mushroom. Was, I haven't seen that little one. I was like, that's pretty dope, man. Because yeah. I don't want to make 100 at a time. So what I, I ended up doing the... was I taped around the ones that I wasn't using so I could use the card to scrape it in, you know, uh, and tamp it down. I just don't have the taffer, see? So I have, I have, I use my uh, taffer that I use for my cones that I bought. But so I got to do each one singly, which is kind of annoying. But yeah. still, it's not that big of a deal. I mean, you sit down for a half yeah. hour. It's just something to do for a little bit, you know? Right. and gets you 50 yeah. and it's, it's probably gonna last I, it's, me a month it's funny because you said you didn't want all the mushroom in your gut but my concern was all the the capsules gelatin, in my gut you know there's different kinds of capsules <laughs> well, I you can buy too. no i didn't get gelatin i got vegan i got vegan uh, capsules i don't want all those capsules in my gut yeah whatever they are you know these are whether they're probably plant plant cellulose or whatever yeah. they are just, just the now healthy foods yeah these are gelatin ones I'd be putting like 12 or 14 of those, 16 of those suckers in my gut every day. I'm like, nah, yeah, that's, 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 that's kind of wasteful man. of them anyways. So instead, I'm just putting oh. teaspoons in my tea. I'm putting just whatever. Like I just had basically ginger tea with a teaspoon of agaricon mixed into it. Kind of tastes taste. like, uh, um, I don't know, man, like a woody ginger tea. You know, it didn't really give it much taste. I mean, you can come. There's no taste. There's no like... Uh, uh, texture in my mouth or anything maybe there's a slight like uh you can kind of taste it going past your tongue or something you can kind of taste it going past your mouth but there's no like chewing and there's nothing in it you know what i mean and just a powder it pretty much dissolves it's almost water soluble but it's bioavailable and what happens when it when you put it in the tea is it'll actually probably become more bioavailable because you're going to get some of those water soluble alkaloids of the mushroom going into the hot water um, I'm sure that there's a lot of alkaloids that aren't water soluble. They're still remaining inside the mushroom, but you're getting most of them. So you're getting more bioavailable. And then I do the ginger and the lemon. You could add some cinnamon and I do honey to just kind of sweeten it up, kind of kills off the flavor. And there's a pretty big taste difference between the agaricon and between the, what's the other one? The performance blend, the, the reishi and the, uh, cordyceps and lion's mane all mixed together. That has kind of a similar woody type of it. It's just more of like a mushroom. I don't know, man. It really just tastes like ginger tea, to like be honest. Outside and picking up some branches. It's and not that bad. A fucking tea cup. Yeah, it's a little bit like yeah, not that bad. Not that bad, really. A little barky. We'll call it. We'll call that one more on the bark scale. The other one more on the trunk scale. Yeah, but, but not yeah. a pine tree. Not a pine tree, though. This is more like a, a, a oak or something. The Garicons, yeah, they uh, they can be really old too, so I imagine they can get pretty funky tasting. Yeah, I'd say the Garicons probably more like a nice. It's got a little bit of a sweeter kind of a taste to it. It's not that bad. It almost reminds me of uh, maybe like coffee or like dark chocolate cocoa type of a thing. Uh, really, really dark chocolate cocoa. Like it's really maybe nutty. There you go. Not Maggie or something, you know. Those are the capsules uh, I made right there. Raptor in chat says that ginger, uh, ginger tea helps with the you know your stomach issues. Your stomach, yeah. For, and yeah, it's always a good anything with ginger. If you can find real, it used to be Verner's. I was always when I was a kid, I was given Verner's with it. And I had an upset stomach, and it used to always make my stomach feel better. But then it stopped working, and then I realized when I looked at the can that they stopped even using ginger in it. It was like ginger flavoring or some shit instead. So. Get yeah. you something with real ginger and or yeah. uh, they actually sell just ginger capsules too. Uh, it's it's good to have ginger capsules just in your medicine cupboard for for Ooh, to have like something it. in a pinch when you don't feel like making shit or doing anything else because you're sick. You got a capsule you can take. Thanks, Raptor, for the tip on the ginger tea. And capsules, yeah, man, interesting. <sighs> I uh, yeah, it it actually covers up the flavor quite well. I I drink ginger tea just about all day every day uh yeah most mostly all the day you know uh 
keep topping it off. I pretty much use the same ginger. Right? Try so you to just get it go all. buy like a big ginger root at the store and then just dip into it? Yeah. Yeah. Every morning, that's kind of what I cut up and I'll get into. Last couple of days, I did dig into my tea cabinet and I found some Bigelow. What was it? It was like some uh, a matcha tea. It was some matcha green tea with turmeric. So the last couple of days, I've been kind of drinking that and I've been mixing the mushroom in with that. It's actually been really good, uh, especially the performance blend, because what I'm trying to get out of that is I'm trying to limit my caffeine intake for the most part, because I haven't been drinking coffee. I drank, I've gone through like maybe the best part of a little bit of a bag that I bought back in the beginning of October, maybe. And it's a decaf, you know what I mean? And I, so I've drank like maybe a couple pots of coffee in the last couple months. Otherwise, that's it. And it was decaf anyways. Had a couple teas, maybe. And then, uh, so I've been a couple little green teas here and there. But I'm only steeping it for a couple minutes anyways. Just more or less trying to get, like, the turmeric and the matcha and a lot of the spices out of it. So what I'm chasing is synergy. I'm trying to get lots of, like, uh, trying to get lots of, you know, like the entourage effect, basically, with terpenes and THC. It also exists with terpenes and uh, the mushrooms, there's terpenes in mushrooms. There's also, you know, terpenes in all the foods that we eat. Well, if we can eat like plant foods, fruits, vegetables, and things like that, there's lots of terpenes in those. Synergistically with the THC that we eat, with the mushrooms that we're eating, you know, and what they're all doing inside of our body. Lo and behold, there's a little bit of alchemy that goes on and kind of heals you. So whether or not you need it, you know, it's always good to be proactive with your health and hope to not have to need modern medicine in the future. So that's kind of my, so yeah, I use cannabis approach. to address my nausea. If nice. I have issues from mushrooms, I just smoke or like in the morning when I wake up, um, you know, my stomach will be hurting for a while. Burn two joints. So Red, you hear about this fucking guy out of Israel? He used to work for the defense of some, yeah, man. some part. Come out, and he's saying now that uh, it's becoming more accepted, and the world's ready to hear it. He wanted to let everybody know that there's a, a fucking underground base on Mars that American astronauts are on, and there's a. I think the word he used was Federation of Alien Beings. So to me, that means like more than one race that uh, we somehow have a deal with. I'm using we as in the, the American astronauts or whatever. I'm I'm a little, uh, I was a little surprised to see somebody of that stature to come out with. That's not the first that. person that's done that though. They're no, there's that guy out of Canada leaders. too, same thing. Okay. I could see this. I could see this being possible. It's definitely it's aliens, Mars. Red. Yeah, I can see that. It's just times like this when the news is talking about unrest and everything else. I always look at the alternate shit that comes out then because that's when they try to hide shit. You know what I mean? And I saw that. It's the old like, waste station. Well, you know, I would like to see, you know, they always say that if that was to happen, that it would bring the world together. And if 2020 has taught me anything, it doesn't bring people together. And that's a fucking shame, well, man. So it kind of starts probably, with you. You know what I mean? Probably the Anu and Kai. And, uh, and Anunnaki, and, uh, and the B Anunnaki, yeah, those guys. Anunnaki, yep. Yeah, I can't pronounce that right. I can't pronounce most words. And then, <laughs> uh, and then they, uh, the beings from Sirius, who are uh, are basically our blood donors. Bob Groves over there fucking scaring me with the war is peace, freedom is slavery, ignorance is strength. Don't don't you nineteen eighty four me, my friend. <laughs> Not want the rat yeah man me. mars was a uh a way station yeah, bob a, lazar. Let's check out, yeah bob lazar yeah believe me i've checked out bob lazar i don't know only bill and ted that's Pretty our good, cue man. red canada kai is offended <laughs> <laughs> kai that's great. 
do I really have to do I have to like go all the way to Nibiru? Is that where we need to go? Gotta go all the way to planet number twelve. I'm not going all the way to planet number twelve, dude. That's that's way too space. You can't count that. Pluto. Pluto's not a planet anymore. They can't the numbers are all fucked up now, dude. Dude, if I don't think it's part Pluto, people, man. I don't even think it's part Pluto. Interesting in these crazy fucking moons and shit, man. So, so, so supposedly Nibiru had a crazy orbit at one time. It's more or less feared or, yeah, rounded out in the time. So who knows if the beings on Nibiru exist anymore. But the planet would get really cold. I'm not going in the hole. See, does the aliens are getting ready to claim their stash on Oak Island. They're going to be the ones that finally dig all the way down for it, right? So I heard rumors that they fucking gave up on it or they found something, but it wasn't impressive, whatever it is. What a fucking letdown that is. They found nothing, man. It was claimed like 12 people's lives and shit. Greed, man. I don't know. I miss that. It's, so, it's fascinating. I always love the treasure. I say episodes. leave that alien's booty alone. Let it be. What are we there's talking your, there's about? There's your quote. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, look, man. It's the alien's booty. Secret City knows all about the Anna Nakai. Anna? Anna Nakai Simpson? Is that what it is? Yeah. Anna Nakai yeah, Simpson? No. I'm, I'm going to butcher that. I'm just going to butcher it. I'm going to butcher the planet Nibiru. Hey, the mouse. It's I'm not going to pretend like I'm any kind of expert, but I've always heard it called Anunnaki. It's, it's it is. It is. Okay. Yeah, it's something. It's something like that. It's something like that, and I don't know. Or it's maybe, maybe it's the teller that I've heard it from that it pronounced it a different way. Right. I could be completely wrong for sure. So I don't know. But the uh, yeah. So anyway, the, the tale is the tale is they were mining Earth for gold because they needed it to and this wasn't like a planet where you have to like go through wormholes or any crazy shit to get to like this was they were basically our level of technology uh maybe some theories that we're working on is like put atomized metals in the atmosphere to kind of like cool our planet they needed to like warm the planet because it got too close i got too far in their elliptical orbit got too far away from the sun or suns there could potentially be parental suns uh that there, that explains some of the phenomena that goes on between some of the spinning between our planets and some different orbits. Like Pluto has like a strange orbit, even though it's not really a planet, it still does strange things. Uh, same with Neptune and some other things. They like bounce in their orbits. <clears throat> so they think there's, there's other gravitational poles pulling on them, potentially maybe stars, maybe they're burned out. We don't see them, things like that. I don't know. But anyways. Hi, hi, hit you with the baby come back. Are you? No, I, I said high high farms did. Oh. <laughs> How high did? Oh dang. Yeah. yeah. Just what oh, I thought you said high like, I was I like, think, if high and tight hit me. Dang. I think it's pretty obviously they they have technology that uh, lets them ignore gravity, which is the most fascinating thing to me. It's like what the fuck? Like when you see these things and, you, and you hear these float. guys that are coming out, these 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 you know well respected fighter jet pilots coming out and saying whatever it was we don't have anything that's even close to being able to do what these things are doing so well supposedly every like 35 i think it's only 3500 years that this planet uh nibiru like comes between i think it's like jupiter and saturn or something like that and so they were jumping off bouncing mars um basically as a way station collecting gold from earth we should, have, back up we, we should have swapped them for the fucking the real live actual alien OG dank. That's what we should have done. <laughs> you want our gold? We want your fucking alien OG dank. It's probably where it came from, man. It could have came from like, that. Oh, you think it's an interplanetary fucking that's space the only, seed that came through? No, that's the only reason they fucking come here is to get some fucking weed, man. It's that's the good thing we have to offer. <laughs> they gotta come, they gotta come to the hood sometimes <laughs> to get a re-out, man. Nibiru OG. <laughs> They get high as fuck off our weed, and then they start probing people and shit. <laughs> That's where red comes in. Look, Ian. Ian knows what's up. They need labor. Yeah, that's where humankind comes from. This, this is just the stories. This is just the story. This the is epic. the um. So, uh, 
what is it's his the, name? It's the humanized version of like the Sumerian epic. There's a Zachariah Sumerian, Sitchin. Well, there's, Bruce yes, yes. No, it Sitchin. is. It's, it's you're exactly right. It's Zachariah Sitchin. It's uh, there's an interplanetary. It's it's a huge pl planetary epic of the gods. Is basically the the Sumerian epic, right? So you have the Sumerian creation story. Um, which is synonymous pretty much with the creation story of the Hebrew text, creation story of the Bible, all of this stuff, the Old Testament, um, very synonymous together. And it's all like in, in this story, as far as like the, uh, what, what did I say? The, um, <clears throat> the ancient text, the, that goes through, uh, planetary words and all kinds of like gods and things like that. So like to break it into like, man form or like physical form like they're saying that it's like this is the, like that's like the other side of the story is that there are these beings jumping from the the planets and they're mining the gold and like they needed workers uh and yeah basically there's a rebellion because they're tired of mining gold on earth and so they basically created us clay people yeah well, yeah, man. and then there's a theory that they used the uh, they used the um, the pri primate species, the most dominant primate species on the planet, which may or may not have been like maybe apes, and then they had potentially used what like uh, a DNA from another being, which was supposedly beings from Sirius. So now that's where they bring in like the uh, the, the teleportation because they had to get here from some. They were like a fourth dimensional being, and they were able to get here that way so that brings in like a totally different realm of consciousness and things like that and that's where things start to kind of drift off in the epic but uh that's probably as far as i'll red, go tonight let's, we only let's, have four minutes. i want to ask chat if you dig the red alien talks throw me a ufo throw me an alien let me throw them up in the chat for red we are coming up to the edge here got about three minutes left and we're going to get up out of here. I hate this part of the show because usually we're just getting to the point where Red's getting ready to take us to another realm on the Great Space Coaster. And if you don't know what the Great Space Coaster is, you got to go check it out on YouTube. You need to smoke better weed. Get on board. Gary, good news. Cool. There's a bunch of people in chat, though, that know exactly the stories of uh, the tales that we're telling. read the chat man yeah well a lot of that stuff came out in like the 70s and i mean the, the the stuff's been out for a really long time it's more or less out there a lot more just because of the internet and things they, like they, that they, but swamp cat woke up when i was talking about the alien booty there it is there's all kinds of aliens going. cheers shaggy sacred plant medicine danny red says you lost <laughs> <laughs> cheers that i'm gonna shout i lost him i lost him to ananaki <laughs> Anna Nakai Simpson. Anna Nakai. I want to shout out kind of something that we don't really talk a lot about on any of our shows, and that's the uh, Michigan Bro Grow Show Instagram uh, DM chat. What do you call that? Whatever that is. It's where the Groski, Groskis are. Groski chat. Yeah, the Groski, Groski chat. chat. Our Instagram. Are you talking to our Instagram Groski chat? Yeah. Groski chat? Discord yeah. Groski chat. I love that Instagram. shit. It's just, you can pop in anytime and there's usually it's something always somebody interesting. Up. Yeah. Uh, and one thing I learned today in there was that in glass blowing, the, uh, the was it the fire hole that the, the fucking glass comes out of that where you're, you're blowing the glass is called the glory hole. <laughs> it's amazing. That's shit that Lips you don't to it. There you go. That's something you'll never forget, but you know. Who knows? It might be a Jeopardy question. I might be on Jeopardy, and I could win some money on that. Oh, who doesn't want to see Spartan? On Jeopardy? Right, Daddy Rod, thank you. This is a good show. Sorry, guys. Big grown meds. Cheers. Yeah, as we come up against the wall here, I just want to say it's always fun to talk to Spartan Grown and Backlicker. Alaskan Dabbers, cheers. Or we're a beanie. <laughs> Not just any beanie, a bougie beanie. Bougie beanie. 
fucking eighty dollar hat. That's how you right? can that's how you can tell you have no way, dude. <laughs> 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 that's, how you, that's how you can tell he's a backlinking pro. He does not have a bill to get in his way or anything, man. I hope so. <laughs> they call him Red Velvet because of his tongue. Are we doing sign offs right now? Red yeah, Sailor. Red's trying fun. to get up out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing stuff. Amazing. I've seen this 5% thing in chat, so I'm going to have to check it out, I guess. I, I'm not, I don't know. Depending on what it is, I suppose. It's going to pull me way too far into a YouTube rabbit hole and might have to uh, pass on it. But uh, yeah, I totally agree on Lucky Farms about hemp being the best plant to clean up new waste. I, that's why I love hemp. All of its glory. What is that I fancy word? Off. What's the fancy word for Sorry. that? that hemp, 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 ray? Yeah, man. Let that be the yes. way. That is exactly the fancy word he was thinking about. It's so fucking fancy, bro. Put the pinky up when you say hemp hemp hooray. It's fancy it's shit. Hemp because hemp it's because he's got the bougie fucking eighty dollar hat on. If you haven't laughed tonight at some point hemp during numbers? this fucking show, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, you fucking man. Ah, oh, shit. Red Velvet, you want to tell them where they can uh-huh. find you? Uh, Instagram, yeah, Red Center Farm. Yeah, not Red Velvet. Red Center. If it's, it's your first time tuning in, it's Red Center. Backer, backlicker. <laughs> I go by many names, many different names. Oh. I have a few more, believe it or not. Dude, I, I hear the Rolling Stones in my head right now, man. They call them. And many more. <laughs> Depends on what, Can you guess you my name? <sighs> Spartan. Uh, you can find me Spartan Grown on Instagram. All one word. Real easy. And I'm high and ready to go to fucking bed. Love you guys. Love you, chat. <laughs> See? There we go. Uh, before we get up out of here, I do want to say cheers to everybody in chat. Thank you for stopping through. Make sure you check out our partners with 2020 Mendocino and with Easy Swap Pots and with the Seed Cellar. Shout out to the Can of Cake. And uh, other than that, man, I, I have the most fun on this show. And cheers. Backler, you got anything else for him? I think that's a wrap, man. No, I just, uh, yeah, shout out to uh, my mom because it's her birthday. And uh, happy yeah. birthday, Mama Red. I'm just pulling out all the stops to stop talking about the back liquor. He just wants to cut out early. Bring it up. just mom. keeps wanting to bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, come back. Ask me if I want any, any extras. Do I need back to, like, liquor, roll, come roll back. Another one? I got to back roll another one, don't I? Back roll, back look. I'm telling you. It, it, hey, hey, it works. It works. I, I mean, for rolling a 